Right, here we are again. The glasses. We're going to get them apart maybe today. I'm going to run through 10 suggestions, the 10 that I haven't yet tried, that have come in from different people. And just so that I know that I've tried everything that anyone has suggested, I'm just going to run through them fast as I can. Well, this one is from suggested by Steve, Lou, Sally and Elle. I have tried it many times before. I haven't got a lot of hope about this one, but it's hot water around the bottom glass and the cold icy water in the top one. So this is just boiling, just, just finished boiling. And this is iced water that has been sat in the freezer for a little while. It's um, still cold, but I didn't have any actual ice cubes to add into it to make it extra cold. I thought maybe frozen peas might do the job. So I'm going to tip them in just to give it an extra bit of cold. Top it up with cold water. Now some people said you need to like it acts instantly and you need to try and remove them straight away. But I did try that before. No budging. So I'm actually going to leave that a couple of minutes more and come back and see how it's done. Okay, well that's been a few minutes now, so let's just take it out. Um, no, no budge. So I had a suggestion from Roxanne that the glasses might be enchanted or possessed in some way and best left as they are. However, I'm still going to have a go. Um, so I've done a little bit of research online regarding exorcism. Not strictly scientific, possibly, but let's give it a go. I also have a little bell because um, in one of the research articles I read, vibration, like of a high vibration, could sometimes help. Well, that might be particularly of uh, use when trying to separate glasses. So, we have our holy water here. Okay. And you be free from each other. Feel your independence. your freedom, feel your loosening and unbinding. May any enchantment, forces, whatever kind, that are holding you together, unstick, unglue, unbind, unhold. May you be separate, free, loose, to go separate ways. Free now. <laughs> I really thought for a moment that one might work. Uh, no, we're on to the next one. So, our next one, suggested by Mel, is heat a candle inside. Not quite sure how this one's going to work, just heat a candle inside. Uh, well, going to try it. So I thought I would choose a special candle that is, I thought the glass might give some kind of solidarity energy to the two glasses to just give a bit of extra power for this one. So I'm going to sit it there. And I realized that sitting a glass in it means that it's not actually heating inside the glass so maybe you would better <laughs> only joking okay that one's for you Mel heat 
lighting up. So I'm just going to let this one sit and heat up for a while. Maybe even two together, double heating if you want inside. Heat, oh, <laughs> yes. Forgetting my science of uh, cutting off the oxygen there, but to be honest, it's not really going to heat up inside that effectively, I don't think. So I think I'm going to call that one a fail. So on to the next one. Okay, the next one comes from Paula who suggests wait a while and then twist a little. Now I have actually been waiting about a month and regularly twisting. So I know this one doesn't work, but just for the sake of the camera, as evidence that I have tried it, here I am waiting. I'm gonna sit here and wait for a while as instructed and see what happens. Okay, I've waited a long time. It was quite relaxing, but now I'm going to try the twist a little. <laughs> no. <laughs> Even after all that waiting, Paula. No! No. So, onwards to interesting one from Vincent here. No further instructions, but he suggested dental floss. Not quite sure how this one works with your dental floss, but I bought two types just in case, uh, you know, there's a brand difference. Um, not quite sure what I do exactly because I can't really get the floss down there, but I'm going to try and do what I can. Vincent with what I think you might you know maybe if I pull it it's gone right down there between like a little give it a little shimmy see what I need is a couple of holes in the bottom glass to be able to get it right down and Give it a proper. Not gonna work. Well, I don't see how it's gonna work anyway. Like. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with dental floss? I've got a tongue scraper here as well. Do you think? Like. <laughs> I mean, what? Dental floss is gonna work. Maybe even a. Toothbrush is gonna work. I mean, let's, let's, let's just link in, brush the teeth, shall we? There we go. I think this thing is sending me a little bit crazy now. Like, toothpaste, is that gonna work? Getting the toothpaste in there. Ah! <laughs> okay, Vincent, no, that one hasn't worked. I'm sorry. Next up. From Woody, gentle tapping, okay? Gentle, gentle tapping. Gentle toothbrush tapping. No, no, it's not doing it. 
So let's get the candle out. I believe it, the candle's stuck. <laughs> the candle's stuck. <laughs> Is that going to affect the kind of dynamics of the whole thing? <laughs> I'll get the candle out. <laughs> so now we've got the candle in a glass. In a glass. Great. Okay, so the next one is an interesting one. Uh, it's from Stephen, and he suggests a double whammy because it's two glasses. He thinks, invent a cocktail which requires two glasses and the contents to be drunk in a very special order, stroke manner. A double whammy. I have no idea how this one scientifically is going to work, but it sounds too good not to try. So I'm just going to go off and see what I can make a cocktail out of. Back soon. Okay, well this is an interesting one. Um, so, did a little bit of research, I've made cocktails before, so what I found was uh, a bit of syrup, it's good. This is a homemade elder uh, elderflower syrup from a friend of mine. So we're going to put a bit of that in. Okay, that's a very special syrup. Um, fruit juice, very important, fresh fruit. So we're going to put some of that in. I thought it was orange, but it's turned out to be a pink grapefruit. But... This one's definitely orange, we'll have a bit of orange as well. Oops, some real fruits. These are freshly picked blackberries the other day. A few of those. And a few blueberries. Okay, now this is a very special gin, the distillery. Okay, that's a very special ingredient. Well, not a lot left. So that's that one finished. And then we've got another gin, which is the cocoa gin. So that's another special one. Gonna have a bit of that, a bit more. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be a good one. I'm actually going to drink this later. Won't be wasted. Um, now this, I know it doesn't usually go probably in a cocktail, but this is a very special Clenfiddich whiskey, which some of you may know about, and I'm not going to waste it, but it just might add that extra bit of magic because it's a very special bottle that um, I'm just going to take literally the smallest drop because I make this last forever basically. So this is just going to have one magic drop in it. Ooh, there we go. It's going to go back on there. Now I have this brandy. Does that go in cocktails? I don't know. Probably quite nice as it is right now, but cocktails is where you just kind of mix in loads of stuff, I presume. <laughs> and so I'm just going to put a tiny bit of this. Needs using up anyway. Um, so we we'll just have a little bit of brandy. And this hasn't been opened yet. It's about 30 years old. I think I bought it on the way back from somewhere on the ferry and uh, it really does need kind of using up. I used to love Southern Comfort. It's probably still okay. Let's put a bit of that in. Okay. Maybe a little bit more Southern Comfort. Tonic water, it's supposed to be. Maybe 
maybe an addition. Top it up. What I'm going to do is actually put a bit around the edges as well. So that's really fizzing out actually. It's the magic working. So I'm going to put it down around the edges as well. Which is a proper double, whoops, double whammy. I reckon. Is that right Stephen? Proper double whammy, slightly different colours as well. It's interesting. And then um, a special way of drinking it, a special manner of drinking it. I have no idea what that means. So um, this is pretty powerful stuff. Oh my god! Even you know, just the smell. Oh my god! Do you know what? I, um, I thought I felt a little movement then. I seriously thought I felt a bit of movement between the glasses. I must have imagined it, but that would be that would be amazing if it worked. Right, okay. Oh my god. That is actually quite nice. That is bizarrely actually quite nice. Wow, but is it going to separate the glasses? I actually thought I felt a bit of movement again then. I must just be imagining it. I'm going to bottle this up for later anyway, but I'm afraid it hasn't actually separated the glasses. <clears throat> okay, well I'm feeling a little bit flushed after that last experiment, so um, to go and cool off for a bit there. Uh, so the next one from uh, Sally. It's put a straw in and blow some air in. Presumably the force of the air going in would push the inner glass out, but I'm not quite sure how without getting a proper seal. In the absence of silicon or foam or something like that, I've just put cotton wool, which probably not quite as effective, but you can try. It's pretty solid. I don't think much air would get through that. I'm going to put the straw through in one bit. I presume that's what you mean, Sally, and not like down the middle or something. And a little bit on that side. And now we blow. one was suggested by Phil who suggested an interocyter with an electron sorter. No instructions, hadn't even heard what it was, had to google, had to get onto eBay just to find some kind of instruction manual for where I might find something. Managed to get hold of it. Oh, I was a bit suspicious when, um, you know, it just I wasn't coming out with uh, the information that I needed. And then I noticed that there's a bit of a job being done on this. And I unpeeled, basically, the scan. I didn't even get the proper book, and it's actually a secret history of witches, which has nothing at all about an interocyter with an electron sorter in it. Okay, so I've been, uh, I've been had, so I can't actually try this experiment, um, but I'm putting this in just to show you that I really did try and I'm going to be returning this on eBay, but uh, unless I'll continue reading it just in case there's something that 
you know, the witches can do to help, which is quite possible because that's one step that I can maybe do is bring in the witches. Okay, so that's that one. And the next one was David's suggestion of reversing a polarity of neutron flow. Again, this is something that I'm not too familiar with. Um, David didn't provide any instructions and I'm still gonna be researching this one. If anyone can give instructions on how that would actually be done, then I might go ahead and do that experiment. So that is all of the suggestions that I've been given on how to get these glasses apart. Do you know what? Every now and then, I feel like there's a little, a little bit of movement. There is definitely, there is definitely a tiny, tiny, every now and then, more than there was, because there wasn't, it was completely fixed before, but every now and then I feel a little tiny, like it, like it moves. And then it's just locked again, but I feel like... You know, I had an idea that I thought there's one more thing I'm going to try, um, and I might try it tonight, is bicarbonate of soda and white wine vinegar. And if I soak it in that overnight, because that I've used that to unblock drains before, um, do all sorts of amazing things around the house. So that is one thing that I haven't tried yet. And I'm going to try that next. Okay, so we'll see what happens on that. If you've got any more suggestions, stick them in the comments and I'll do my best to try them out. Okay.